So we pick up on page 429, just after that top line where the break is. So Antinous urged, and we all and all agreed, the first man up was Leodes, Oniops' son, a seer who could see the futures of in the smoke, who always sat by the glowing wine bowl well back, the one man in the group who loathed their reckless ways, appalled by the, all their outrage. His turn first. Picking up the weapon now and the swift arrow, he stood at the threshold, poised to try the bow, but failed to bend it. As soon as he tugged the string, his hands went slack, his soft, uncalloused hands, and he called back to the suitors. Friends, I can't bend it. Take it. Someone, try. Here is a bow to rob our best of life and breath, all of our best contenders. Still, better be dead than live on here, never winning the prize that tempts us all forever in pursuit, burning with expectation every day. If there's still a suitor here who hopes, who aches to marry Penelope, Odysseus's wife, just let him try the bow. He'll see the truth. He'll soon lay siege to another Argive woman, trailing her long robes her, and shower her with gifts. And then our queen can marry the one who offers most, the man marked out by fate to be her husband. With those words, he thrust the bow aside, tilting it up against the polished, well-hung doors, and resting a shaft to slant the bow's fine horn, then went. Then back he went to the seat he had left. But Antinous turned on the seer, abuses flying. Leodes, what are you saying? What's got past your lips? What awful, grisly nonsense. It shocks me to hear it. Here is a bow to rob our best of life and breath. Just because you can't string it, you're so weak? Clearly, your genteel mother never bred her boy for the work of bending bows and shooting arrows. We have champions in our ranks to string it quickly. Hop to it, Melanthius, he barked at the goatherd. Rake the fire up in the hall. Pull up a big stool. Heap it with fleece and fetch that hefty ball of lard from the stores inside. So we, young lords, can heat it and, timber and limber the bow and rub it down with grease before we try again and finish off the contest. The goatherd bustled about to rake the fire, still going strong. He pulled up a big stool, heaped it with fleece, and fetched the hefty ball of lard from the stores inside. And the young men limbered the bow, rubbing it down with hot grease, then struggled to bend it back, but failed. No use. They fell far short of the strength the bow required. Antinous still held off, dashing Eurymachus too. The ringleaders of all the suitors, head and shoulders the strongest of the lot. But now the king's two men, the coward and the swineard, had slipped out of the palace side by side, and great Odysseus left the house to join them. Once they were past the courtyard and the gates, he probed them, deftly, surely. Coward? Swineard? What? Shall I blurt this out or keep it to myself? No, speak out. The heart inside me says so. How far would you go to fight beside Odysseus? Say he dropped like that from a clear blue sky, and a god brought him back. Would you fight for the suitors or your king? Tell me how you feel inside your hearts. Father Zeus, the trusty coward shouted, bring my prayer to pass. Let the master come. Some god guide him now. You'd see my power, my fighting arms in action. We're going to pause here and answer another question. <laughs> 